All right, the customer okayed the repair. So what we're doing is the tone ring, lower ball joint, and these crappy plastic sway bar links where the, uh, <laughs> the actual swivel balls down here are completely loose and shot. <clears throat> this side's especially bad. So that's, that's an inspection item. See right there. Ripped boots. And here are the replacement parts. Move ball joint, sway bar links, and the only available aftermarket tone ring. Yeah, it's a doorman, but I think it'll work. So we'll just have to press this guy into the CV axle. I'll show you how to do that. Let's get to it. Before I get too carried away here, I just wanted to say special thanks to Eric Kors. I got my first piece of real swag here uh, from my uh, YouTube fans. Set of top tool, long reach, metric wrenches. I think originally from uh, Dennis Schmidt in Arizona. And uh, Eric sent them up from North Carolina. So thank you, Eric. We'll be using these in the repair procedure. So. Let's get started here with the teardown. First thing, let's buzz off these uh, sway bar links. So, easiest way to get these off, you hold the back with a 17, let's see, a 17 millimeter, right on the back side of the link, right here. There you go. And then we'll buzz that off with a 14 millimeter socket. Nice. I am using the Nano, which is sweet. Let's get that out of the way. So now we can play around with the this link here, we will get to the back with one of our long reach wrenches. That's a 14. Put a 17 on here. You can crack this. That's awesome. Long reach gives you extra torque. Right tools make all the difference. Speed up the process here makes it more fun, satisfying. Put our little mini impact ratchet on the back. Piece of cake. So next uh, I'll see what the path of least resistance is here if you want to take the whole knuckle off or just swing it out of the way. Next thing you want to do is buzz off this axle nut. It's a 32 millimeter. See if the Nano can handle this. Nice. You know, a little, that's probably its limit, but I'd say it's good enough. Now the question is, are we in luck? Or is this axle seized in there? Give it a little spray for good luck. This is a, <laughs> this would be a good exercise for Big Nasty. You know, uh, at Eric O's at South Main Auto Repair. He would have this done in about 10 minutes, but we don't have all the powerful tools. Just wanna see if this axle is gonna move. Now be careful, you don't want to mushroom the end here, so I don't want to go too hard on it. Uh, let me get the let me get the weak sauce air hammer, see if that'll do anything. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna dial it up, full blast. I'll take that. Not too bad. But if uh, this thing was seized, wouldn't cut it. 
So I guess I'm, I am in the market for a, for a new air hammer. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's keep moving. Now I want to take the brake caliper bracket off with the caliper as an assembly, plus the rotor, so it's not in the way. 18 millimeter breaker bar. I'm gonna break these bolts loose. Oh yeah. Yep, Nana wouldn't have uh, broken these, but now I can just buzz them out. So I don't know if it's from the back side here. I can't see it, but nothing special. Just two caliper bracket bolts. No big deal. Swing this out of the way. Don't let it hang by the hose. We'll, we get a little tie strap here. We'll hang it on the spring. All right, caliper's tied up out of the way. Let's get this rotor off. Looks like it's covered in anti-C, so. Might not be as easy as I think. There we go. No big deal. Yeah, looking a little rusty, but we'll let her go for now. Finally, we can see our prize. There's our tone ring. There's a crack right there. The axle is loose. Uh, now we can probably take this pinch bolt out out of the ball joint and separate the lower arm from the knuckle. And then hopefully we'll have enough room to swing the whole mess out of the way, do the ball joint and the tone ring right here on the vehicle. Now to get this pinch bolt out, it's a 15 on the nut side and 13 on the bolt side, so I'll go, you know, go figure. Alright, we'll re-thread the nut onto our bolt, that way we can smack on it. down with croil this uh, pinch pinch joint and uh, where the ball joint presses in and then I'm going to take the air hammer with a chisel bit and drive it right in the middle here to uh, spread this knuckle apart right there Again, which I had big nasty for this. You gotta separate that ball joint. Depends on how how stuck it is. And we can always probably oh yeah, well actually that's <laughs> that's how loose it is. See that play? That's just the ball joint, that's not even the stud yet coming out of the knuckle. So see the stud started going down. It's actually almost flush with the knuckle, so we're in good shape. We're basically home free. That could have been the hard part, but not too bad, right? So just keep pressing the control arm down and driving out the ball joint. That's all you need to do. Well, maybe this is a little unorthodox. We're going to give it a shot. Got the floor jack right under a pry bar and it's securely 
prying up on that knuckle against the control arm. I got the boot off the ball joint. I'm just going to hammer down on the joint. And hopefully it will drive it out of the knuckle the rest of the way. Let's give that a shot. Now again, DIY, do it at your own risk, wear safety glasses, you know, all the, all the good stuff. I mean, why work hard when you can work smart? But safe, you gotta be safe. Keep that in mind. All right, let's keep moving forward. All righty, now that we got our knuckle safely out of the way, this is our loosey-goosey ball joint here. Shot. So let's hammer the axle out the rest of the way. You know, swing that out. Then we can, uh, the tone ring actually fell off here when I was hammering, that's just from the shock. So, no big deal. There, there's the axle. Should have enough room to uh, get it all the way out. There you go. So there's the, uh, there's the tone ring. Nice. So let's uh, put on some fresh parts. You see where the tone ring used to sit? There's some major rust buildup. That's what caused it to uh, expand and crack. So just, I don't know, I guess it's a poor design. Not all vehicles do this. Some of them do, so we're gonna have to clean all this off grind it off and uh, put the new ring on there. So before putting in any new parts, you want to make sure they're the right parts, okay? Now here, we have a Moog ball joint. Here's the original one. And just so we don't have to get into a big headache, <laughs> welding in ball joints and stuff, you know, you don't want to go there. Take a quick measurement with your calipers, just of the uh, outer diameter of the housing here. So we've got 1.6 six inches right there on the old one and the new one is pretty much the same 1.67 so this should work all right let's uh rig up our harbor freight ball joint removal press and uh pop this thing out all right guys here's the initial setup now, obviously it'd be easier if the car was higher up off the ground but to make room just put the floor jack under the control arm lifted it up enough for the impact to fit under there now we have an adapter right here and we have that much room so they'll at least actually that should press it all the way out since the control arm is pretty thin we just have to get past that lip uh, so that should work in one shot the accepting cup and adapter so all we gotta do is apply some brute force and get this thing out of here now with the nano stalls out, we're just going to have to do it by hand. Awesome. Starting to go. You always put a breaker bar in this. Was doing it the old-fashioned way. It's it's coming out. I see. This adapter bottomed out, and we're still not all the way out, so let's loosen her up. You can see that's how much the ball joint came out already, like a good centimeter or so. Close. Now we just need to find something to 
push it down the rest of the way. All right, here's take two. I just got a flat cap pushing right on the stud. Other option is you could probably cut off the stud and do something like that, but if this stays straight, you know, that's a big if. You know, if it doesn't, you can always back it off a tad, reposition it a little bit. Keep going. Again, this DIY stuff, you know, it's fun. If you do it yourself, save a crap, crap load of money. It's not as easy as Scotty Kilmer makes it look, but you know, it's doable. Even with some cheaper tools, you know, they'll, they'll still do it. Do the job. So you're going to clean that out, spray it down with some fluid film. Pop in our new joint, and then we'll take care of that tone ring. I figure before we pop in the new ball joint, it would be wise to get this tone ring on here since uh, cleaning the axle will just make a lot more debris and I don't want that anywhere near the new parts. So let's take get this axle down, clean off the rust, and put the new tone ring on there, and then we'll uh, install the new ball joint. Now to remove this rust off of the axle so the new tone ring goes on nice and nice and easy, I'm going to use a drill and a rust removing disc. It's going to make a lot of dust, so I like to wear a respirator, safety goggles, you know the deal. All right, let's go to town. So you can see it's doing a decent job removing the rust from the surface. There are some larger chunks you might want to chisel off, but you know, just get it clean and even. Now for the final pass, you want to use a square file and just get right in the groove so this new ring, tone ring, will sit flush. So just go like that, you'll sand this surface and the lip itself. Actually works really well. You'll see how uh, nice and shiny it looks. No rust flakes. Now this file, I think I <laughs> we uh borrowed from my uh, dad's lab back in Cornell in like the 90s or something so I hope they're not missing it but I'm putting it to good use so <laughs> that looks great Sure, we're not missing anything. So here, preparation is everything. The new part will go right on. Your surface is clean and lubed. No problems. Now the new tone ring. Right here.
It's an, obviously it's an interference fit. So, actually that, maybe we cleaned off the rust too well, huh? So you can see there's a gap right now. So all we need to do really, you know, if it goes on hard, you could heat up the ring in like your oven or something to expand it a little bit and then pop it on. But in this case, I think we can get away with uh, just tapping it on lightly with a hammer all the way around. Now you want to make sure it doesn't slip. Now a good idea is to use the old ring kind of as a spacer. Just go all the way around, hammer that sucker on there. Now some cars are a lot easier, a lot harder to get on than others. And basically if you can't get it out with your fingers, it'll there's no load on it really. It just needs to stay on there and then <laughs> the new rust will, uh, <laughs> for a while, it'll secure it on there until the same thing happens. You know, rust jacking and it'll crack in half considering it's a Dorman unit. We'll give it a, f a few years, you know, benefit of the doubt. And I think we're in, we're in good shape. Just make sure you got it on nice and even all the way around. No issues there. I mean, I guess you could tack weld it or something, but yeah, I don't see this uh, coming off in the, in the near future here. So that's how you install a tone ring. We'll get this thing out of the way and press in our new ball joint here. So once again, make sure the uh, accepting control arm surface is nice and clean. Give it a little shot of your favorite whatever to make it go in easier. Good enough. set up here to accept the joint you want this diameter to be as small as possible but big enough so the new joint itself can go right in here and be pressed in so that's going to sit up here now on this style joint there's actually an arrow that tells you uh, mount inboard Right there, I think that's for the grease fitting and the grease kind of oozes out where it's supposed to, not onto the brake rotor. So we're going to pop that in right here. And to get it started, you know, no big deal, you can just give it a couple taps. So our setup is going to be that and the actual cup pressing on the bottom. Just want to make sure that the diameter is acceptable so it presses on the outside edge right here. No big deal. So it's going to go like that approximately. I'm going to hammer this in just a little more. So actually. all your setup just falls apart on camera always except for if Eric's doing it <laughs> well I guess he drops stuff too right uh, nobody's perfect let's see here so this guy's gonna fit in here it's gonna go in there it's gonna come up press on our joint like so. So you want them to start nice and smooth. You can spray this surface down a little bit just to ease installation. Again, we're going to go by hand here. 
at least to uh, get this baby started. It is going in kind of tight. See, I had to reposition the bottom adapter further this way because this side was further out, so I'll push this side in. Um, it's just not a great engineering solution here. Uh, this control arm is just, I don't know, if it's soft or what, maybe the ball joint's a little oversized, that's why it's going in so tight. But anyways, I'm just going to drive it home, get a bigger, bigger breaker bar, and uh, it definitely won't come out. So we got the three quarter inch breaker bar right there. Almost home free. Certainly feels easier now. And that's good. There's a finished product right there. Nice and tight. And we'll uh, put the grease zerk on and do all that good stuff. Well, yeah, from here it's, uh, it's just straightforward reassembly. They do provide you with a new pinch bolt, so make sure you use that. This old one's probably stretched out. You don't want that to snap off. There's the uh, the grease zerk. We'll just screw it in the bottom here. Give it a couple shots of grease. It'll be uh, it'll be good to go. Starting to really love these wrenches. Very uh, effortless, easy on the hands. Awesome. Thanks again, Eric. <laughs> Appreciate the swag, man. All right, let's get this thing buttoned up. Before I forget, a couple shots of grease. So we see the uh, oh yeah, that, there you go. That should be enough. Should last us a good long time. I'll lower this down. Perfect. Make sure your wheel bearing uh, is good. If uh, if it's not, now is a good time to do it. Looks like a press-in style bearing there. So now uh, reassembly is in reverse order. Let's see here. Let's just pry this down. Get our axle in. You know the drill. Before installing the axle, we'll spray down a little fluid film to prevent future corrosion and facilitate future removal. As you know, it's a Ford, it's gonna come back out, right? That's right. So let's uh, unhook it here. Get the spline started. Again, balancing act. Everything 
just falls into place eventually. So the axle is basically in. We start our axle nut on there. Just gotta get this guy. Again, work smart, not hard. Give it a little, loose a little preload with the floor jack. There it goes. Bingo. Make sure the, uh, Make sure the hole is clear. Pop in our new pinch bolt. Same way uh, it came out. So tap that through. Ah. Remember, don't force it, don't force it. If in doubt, use the old bolt. Tap it back out, see what, see what you miss. Don't want to screw up the threads or anything. <laughs> that was going to go back and forth. Now remember we spread the knuckle so now the holes are kind of a little misaligned so I guess the bolt will just have to we just have to go through regardless. So I just looped it up and driving it through with the impact. There it is. New nut. 14 millimeter, good to go. As Erico would say, tightened down to factory specifications. That means three, setting three on the nano. Sweet. Awesome. I like it. Alright, next step. Tighten down the axle nut. But for this, the factory spec is a bigger air gun. We'll use the IR-231. Set to maximum, maximum full blast, number five. Oh, forward. Tight enough for me. Whoever used never sees on this brake rotor. Man, oh, I hate never sees. <laughs> it's everywhere. I got some on the, on the brake disc. It's only fitting we use uh, the legend's favorite here. No dramatic music, but that works surprisingly well. You don't even need to wipe anything off, it's just magic. Learn from the pros, right? Yeah, that's what I do. Now uh, let's put this brake caliper back on. Even though this uh, rotor has seen better days. No big deal. 
Last but not least, we can't forget to install our new sway bar links and check out this beefiness with grease zerks. Man, these are like friggin' hardcore. Hopefully they'll outlast the Ford ones. Those are like cheap plastic garbage. <clears throat> Just for kicks, let's see what these are made. Yeah, Mexico. I'll go with that. Pop these guys on. Plug and play. That's pretty much it. All we got to do after the uh, wheels are back on is a toe in alignment because the tires, I'll show you what happened due to the worn ball joint, I'm assuming. The insides got pretty shaved, so we'll uh, at least correct that for now. We can't totally bring these tires back to life, but we'll prevent further premature wear. So we're finishing this project up with a toe-in alignment check, and the wheels look perfectly straight ahead, zero toe-in, but the damage has been done. You can see how the inside of this tire is worn very unevenly, it's kind of cupped. This side's even worse. Yeah, look at that. Boom, like no tread left on the inside edge. But decent tread of left on the outside. And it's really cupped and they're kind of noisy. So, I don't know, maybe we'll swap them over with the, with the rears. These look a little better, but still. They are getting cupped on the inside. Maybe this Yokohama Geolander isn't the best wearing tire out there. But anyways, uh, I think that'll wrap it up. Take it for a test drive and you look at the wheel speeds again, I'm sure they'll be perfect. Um, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Threw a little uh, wrenching in there even though that's not really my specialty. I uh, still got through it, replaced all the, only the necessary parts, did a cool diagnosis. So, thanks a lot for watching, thanks again for the long wrenches, I'm really uh, growing to like those. We'll see those in uh, future vids. Alright guys, catch you next time. Alright, back in the car after the fix, we still got our lights flashing here. Still got her codes, I'm just gonna drive it and see what happens. ABS light went off, four wheel drive light's still flashing. Do uh ah oh, what the heck? Let's just clear the codes. All right, clear the codes. Codes cleared. Memory codes. No codes present. Sweet. Key on engine off. Self test. I don't know if this is the same or not. <clears throat> no codes present. Sweet. Alright, let's go to our transfer case. Codes. Memory. <clears throat> That's the same one we saw before. Key on engine off self test.
no codes for the Keon engine off self test but we still have that one in memory so let's reset that alright great well did it work or not no codes present awesome let's go back to our ABS menu and look at our wheel speeds there we go left rear right rear left front right front Dropouts, no glitches. Pay attention to that right front. Wonder why our four wheel drive indicator is still blinking here. Do a uh, park it, turn it off, take the key out, let the computer reset itself. Real happy now, Ford. We'll even uh, buckle the seat belt, shut up that dinger. Alright, take it for a spin. Look at that. The steering wheel is perfectly straight. String alignment. Alright, we didn't touch the alignment. It was already uh, in spec, but we did check it. Alright, I'm going to give it go for a spin and let you know how it goes. All right, after about five miles, no lights, no codes, drive smooth, no more rattles in the suspension. I'm happy with that fix. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. See you next time. Bye-bye.